five blending registers. During this lesson, we're going to be learning how to blend all three of your vocal registers, chest, middle, and head register. So as we discovered in lesson four, the pharyngeal resonator is the bridge between your chest and head resonators, or chest and head notes, and is the foundation of a well-blended vocal range. And we also know that most of the time, singers run into issues such as strain, vocal breaks, or weak and breathy tone because they attempt to jump straight from the chest register to the head register without crossing the pharyngeal bridge. This is the most common cause for vocal breaks, and I'd like to spend a bit of time here talking about vocal breaks so that you understand how and why vocal breaks occur and how to avoid them. So what is a vocal break? Vocal breaks are one of the most common issues that many singers experience when learning how to sing and usually, though not always, occur between the lower and middle registers of a singer's voice. For example, have you ever heard or felt your voice do this? Ah. Did you notice how when I reached a certain pitch, my voice flipped or broke, which resulted in a weaker, breathier sound? That's what we call a vocal break or a break in the voice and ultimately it's caused by extreme tension in the neck and throat area. So as we've talked about in previous lessons, tension surrounding the vocal cords disables them from functioning properly and prevents them from easily changing position in order to produce different pitches. So, a vocal break is a classic example of how tension and force dramatically affect your level of comfort while singing and the quality of tone you produce. So let's look at what's actually happening when a singer experiences a vocal break. So as we know, the voice is controlled by muscles and cartilage that sit inside the larynx, aka the voice box. Oversimplifying, these muscles adjust position of the vocal cords to produce the different notes that you sing. Now, many singers experience vocal breaks when they try to use the muscles on the outside of the larynx, i.e. neck and throat muscles. If you place your fingers gently over the front of your neck and throat and swallow, you'll feel the larynx move upwards towards your jaw and then down again. So try that with me now. Okay, so the muscles that control your swallowing mechanism sit on the outside of your larynx and are not the muscles you use for healthy, natural vocal production. As you can feel, these muscles work in a way that makes the larynx rise in the throat and when this happens, the muscles on the inside of the larynx are restricted in movement. The most common reason a singer experiences strain while singing is because they're engaging these same swallow muscles. When these muscles are pushed or stretched to their physical limits, the larynx can rise no further in the throat and the vocal cords become immobilized due to the tension that this creates. This is precisely the point at which you may experience the break. At this point, the muscles are forced to release, causing your voice to flip into the next area of your voice, where you will no doubt find that your voice is weak or breathy and lacks control and vitality. Most often, the reason that we use our voice in this unhealthy way is due to the desire to sing louder or with more power. And I know this not only through 20 years of experience teaching people who have encountered this issue, but also from my own personal experience. Because when I first started singing, I thought that I had to push my voice to get a louder, more powerful sound. Obviously, I didn't get very far using that approach. However, singers that have powerful voices achieve this power through the combined use of their resonators, breath pressure and control, and the use of their vocal and abdominal muscles. 
as we've discovered in previous lessons, and not as a result of physical strength or learned force of tone. So the moral of the story is to keep the larynx seated rather than forcing it to rise in the throat as a result of pushing the sound louder or higher. Basically, during this lesson, we're going to begin referring to the middle register or pharyngeal bridge as your mix voice because it's through this range of notes that sit in the pharyngeal resonator that the chest register and head register are pulled or blended or mixed together so that you can create a smooth, even transition between the chest and head registers. As your mix voice is usually the area that needs the most work because it's a coordination of vocal muscle groups used in both the head and chest registers, make sure that you exercise this area of your voice daily along with the other registers. However, whilst you are singing in your middle register, become aware of how, when you step lower into your pharyngeal resonator, you begin to feel your chest voice engaging. It's like there is a pull towards it. As this happens, try to resist dropping into the chest register and instead lighten off on your tone, as we discussed before and ease yourself down into your chest register, much like you'd ease yourself down into a hot bath. So take it slow and be aware of the sensations that occur as you do this. The same goes with your head voice. As you step up higher in pitch and thus into the upper areas of your pharyngeal resonator, resist the urge to flip into your head voice. Instead, Imagine that you're leaning against the sound as you ascend, almost as if the vibration that you feel at the front of your face is leaning inward against you and you in turn are leaning out against it. Uh, you could liken it to the supportive force of balance that's achieved when you and a friend are sitting with your backs together. So be easy with this. It's not as difficult as you think. It may seem foreign, but it's not difficult. There's nothing standing between you and your goal except a bit of time, practice and patience. And I'm sure you'd agree that these elements are nothing if not practiced many times in your life whilst learning the many other skills that you have right now. So this is definitely within your reach. So all we're doing in this lesson is combining all of the information from lesson four and learning how to use all three registers in combination. However, before we start singing, make sure that you've warmed up your voice, especially if this is the first time you're singing today. So also remember that as you go through all of the exercises in this lesson, make sure you're implementing all of the techniques you've been studying so far, like your posture, your breathing technique, and also remember to make as clear a sound as you know how to do at this point. And don't force the tone or push your voice. Keep your jaw, tongue and throat relaxed and maintain your awareness of where the resonance should be occurring in your body. So, when you're ready, let's go straight into our first exercise for this lesson. the blending process by using the mm sound again, that's the NG sound, to engage the pharyngeal resonator while singing up from our chest register all the way through the mix and into the head register and back down again. The NG sound will act as a binder or connector that keeps the pharyngeal resonator switched on even while you're singing notes that are engaging the chest registers and head register. Your aim is to achieve a clear sound while keeping the tone light, especially in the chest register, so that the transition upward and into the mix is easier to coordinate. As you move through your mix and up high into your head register, try to lean against the sound rather than reaching up or lifting up for those notes, because this will help you to avoid flipping 
into your head as you ascend towards the top of the scale. So just briefly, rather than reaching up or imagining that the sound is up, after all, when you think up, your body does up, which can cause tension. So rather than thinking up, think out or forward, almost as if you're leaning into the sound. However, we cover that area much greater in the range extension lesson. Also, at all times during this exercise, you want to be feeling the resonance in your pharynx while simultaneously feeling it in your chest. Then as we go higher, you want to be feeling that resonance in both your pharynx and in your head. This will take a bit of practice because up until now, we've focused the sound mostly into only one resonator. This is where your coordination begins to expand. So just take it step by step. Don't rush, you've got plenty of time and be kind to yourself. Okay, here we go. This is exercise one. Ready please, Mr. Music. <clears throat>
This is exercise two, chest and pharyngeal mix number one. So now that we've engaged the resonance in the pharynx through the use of the NG sound, we're now going to place our focus on mixing the chest and middle registers. So in this exercise, we're using two vowel sounds, R to engage the chest resonance, and as we ascend higher in the scale, the French en sound to engage the pharyngeal resonance. As you sing the R sound, round the edges of the R a little. Instead of this, R, make it R. This will help keep your larynx seated and in other words, helps to avoid it, uh, avoid it rising in your throat and creating tension as you transition into your middle register. So instead of an R sound, make a rounded R sound, okay? So when you sing the R sound, it's perfectly fine to add a little nasality over the top of the tone because this will actually help you to engage the pharyngeal resonance. Okay, this exercise takes you from the bottom of your chest register right up through to the top of your middle register. So make sure that you're not placing too much weight on the tone when you start in chest or you may find that getting into the mix, which is a lighter coordination, is more difficult to do and you could experience a vocal break. Stay light, stay rounded and bring your focus while you sing towards achieving simultaneous vibration in your chest, throat and nose. The idea is to very gradually transition from one vowel sound to the other because this helps to blend the two resonators. So follow my lead and here we go with exercise two. This is exercise three, pharyngeal and head mix number one. 
Again, we're using two vowel sounds here, the French en to engage the pharyngeal resonator and o which gravitates naturally toward the head cavity. Like we did in the previous exercise, make the transition between the vowels gradual and as smooth as you can. Keep your jaw loose and make sure that you drop it open a little as you go into the higher notes. So what I mean is that instead of keeping your lips close together when you sing the oo sound on the higher notes like this, okay, open your mouth a little more like this. This will help create the space that's needed for those higher notes, which we'll talk more about in the lesson on range extension. So even though it might feel awkward or foreign to open your mouth and the vowel sound may seem distorted as you sing it with an open mouth, the vowel sound that's delivered to your audience will still sound like an oo. Your aim during this exercise is to feel the vibration moving up from your throat to your nose and then into your upper facial area, the cheeks, eye sockets and forehead as you engage the notes that sit in your head register. So, ready to give it a go with me? Okay, here's exercise three. brings together the previous two. Now we're going to blend exercises two and three and sing right through from your chest register, through the mix and then on into the head register. As you sing, rather than visualizing that you're climbing up to the head voice, imagine that you're leaning forward into it. It's quite a different mental approach and will help you to avoid flipping into head. By the same token, as you descend back down through the mix and into the chest register, use the imagery of gently lowering yourself into that hot bath by lightening off on the tone so that you don't abandon the pharyngeal resonance too early and crash back down into chest. This exercise is also excellent for breath control. Remember to breathe low into the body and expand your rib cage, but only enough to fill your lungs comfortably. 
As you'll notice when we're singing, there's only a small window of opportunity for you to take a breath in the middle of the exercise so that you've got enough air to get through the descending phrase. In this space, you'll need to exercise your snap breathing technique that we covered in lesson three. Remember to breathe through your mouth and breathe low, allowing the breath to drop quickly and fully into your lungs. Okay, let's get straight to it. Ready? The vowel combination for this exercise is O for the chest register and A, which is a kind of nasal sound, to activate the pharyngeal resonator. We'll be making some bigger jumps in this exercise because there are barely any songs that I know of that consist of only stepping notes like those found in a five note scale for instance. So we'll be practicing the placement of our notes and our accessing of the different resonators while singing some larger intervals. Remember to keep the larynx relaxed and seated by rounding the O just slightly and look for the feeling place of the A eh even before you go to sing it because anticipation of the notes that are coming is an essential part of knowing where you're going vocally and where in your body to focus those notes. So let's do the exercise together now.
exercise takes us from the at sound in the mix that we just practiced and continues us on into the head voice using the E vowel. Again, keep your jaw relaxed and drop it slightly more open as you ascend into the head register like this. E Remember, it often helps while you're doing your exercises to close your eyes. It brings our focus and awareness of our physical sensations inwards and can better help you to find the feeling place of the resonance. Again, your aim during this exercise is to feel the vibration moving up from your throat to your nose and then into your upper facial area, the cheeks, eye sockets and forehead as you engage the notes that sit in your head register. So let's give this one a go, shall we? Here's exercise six. exercises five and six the same way we did earlier. In this exercise we're going to be using the vowel combinations O for the chest register notes, A for the notes in the mix and E for the notes in the head register. So remember as you sing with me sing gently and lightly in your chest voice and keep your larynx down by rounding the edge of the vowel slightly. To anticipate and engage the sensation of resonance in the pharynx even before you change to the at sound. And look for the feeling place of the vibration moving up through your throat, nasal cavity and onwards up into your face and forehead. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, relax and sing. Here we go.
Okay, here's another special exercise for you and it's called the crying cat. And this exercise will have you meowing in your chest register. So you may end up sounding like a cat that can't be bothered meowing like this. Meow. Okay, oh what fun we have. Okay, broken down into segments, we can hear all the rounded or Italian vowel sounds in this word meow. So we've got e, e, a, o, u, e, e, a, o. These are great vowels or shapes for keeping the larynx seated, great vowels for accessing different resonators of the, the body, and the M sound will help with your chord closure. Remember to drop your jaw on the top notes, keep a slightly nasal quality on the tone in the middle notes, and keep the lower notes free from tension and force. It may also help to add a little nasality to the tone in the lower register to help prepare the pharynx to receive the notes in the mix more easily. So here is exercise eight.
maybe now you'll be sounding like the more enthused kitty cat at like dinner time or something. Meow! Because now we're meowing from the mix into the head register. You'll find that the more you play with this exercise, the easier it will be. A lot of the time, our singers are so focused on making a beautiful sound that we forget to just make a natural sound. So be a kid again for a moment, okay? Just have some fun and throw caution to the wind. Much of your skill in sound production comes through play, so let loose a little. All right, in this exercise, we're doing exactly the same as we did in the last exercise, only slightly higher in our register. Here we go. Okay, now you're going to make like a cat on a merry-go-round. Meow! <laughs> That's not very nice, but it was a little funny to imagine. Okay, right through from the chest into and through the mix and up into your head like a cat climbing a tree. Let's go straight into this one.
drop the jaw. lesson five my friend and we've covered some really important issues and techniques the most important thing for you to do is to be consistent in your practice be kind to yourself and enjoy the process I know that might sound kind of daggy but it's important to set realistic expectations and goals for yourself so that your passion for singing continues to grow and develop so just looking back on this lesson, here are a few of the important technical elements to remember associated with vocal blending when you're singing. Number one, keep the chest voice light. Don't place too much weight on your lower notes. So rather than placing a lot of weight on the sound and trying to make a big beefy sound when you're singing in your lower register, be aware that if you do this, and are trying to transition into higher registers or resonators, you may experience strain and or breaks in your voice. So number two, engage the pharyngeal resonance by using a slightly nasal quality. Remember that it's okay for now to use a slightly nasal tone when you're transitioning from your chest register into your mix. So that means that even before you get to that point where you're leaving your chest register, you need to prepare your vocal cords to receive the notes of the middle register and you do this by adding a hint of nasality to your tone. This, uh, this will engage the pharyngeal resonance and allow the vocal cords to more easily transition into the position required to sing those middle notes with more clarity and strength. Number three, lean into the sound as you enter into the head register. Also remember to lean into those higher notes rather than lift up to them. This will help keep the larynx seated and will also avoid vocal strain and breathy tone by directing the resonance more intensely into the facial and head cavities. It's important to never push your voice to the point where you're feeling strain or tension or discomfort. There's a big difference between feeling tired as a result of a good workout and experiencing vocal strain. So with that said, let's move on to lesson six where we'll start really honing in on some of the issues that you may be experiencing as a vocalist and help you to iron them out. I'll see you back here with bells on in a moment for lesson six 
when we'll look more closely at how to produce a clear, resonant vocal sound. Until then, my singing friend, this is Ray Henry and happy singing.